Hey, everybody. Matt Bishop here. Welcome to the Talk This Way podcast. Uh, I am here with Tyler Connolly from Theory of a Dead Man. What's going on, my brother? Uh, not too much. Just uh, I got to my hotel room. I just shaved and I realized I uh, totally hacked my face up. You ever do that where you get like a oh, new yeah. razor? Yep. And then all of a sudden you're like bleeding from <laughs> everywhere. I'm like, what do I, what do I do? My face is burning now. I don't know what I did. You have that home alone moment. Ah! <laughs> Hundred percent. If I had, if I had some of my dad's like Aqua Velva or something, I would have slapped it on there. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, hopefully we get that uh, taken care of by tomorrow because you guys are kicking off a pretty massive tour here with Skillet, Saint Asonia. Yes. So we're in Gary, Indiana, um, Hard Rock Live. I'm trying to think if we played here before. I feel like we have. I'm going to say we have, even though I don't know if we have. But yeah, the Rock <laughs> Resurrection Tour. So this is all kicks off tomorrow. We're here now doing like a production day. Uh, and then, yeah, it all starts tomorrow night. So we're so happy we could do this. We wanted to tour. It's interesting. It's like Skillet. Uh, we've done shows with them before. St. Sonia as well. But we've been kind of asking our management and our agent for quite a while now. I would say probably in the years to do something with Skillet uh and it kind of just i don't know maybe we've just been off different cycles or you know they're just not available and we're not available so it's almost like it's all just happened now and it feels so perfect that the, the tour is is selling amazing and we i got i don't know i could probably just announce already we're doing another leg of this in the fall nice. uh yeah so another rock re resurrection part two in the fall in the united states so beautiful you know, all the other markets yeah yeah, I mean, I've been hearing, you know, through some venue contacts that it's selling really well. Um, I know we'll be at uh, the Reading, Pennsylvania show uh, covering that one. And um, that the team over there is super stoked uh, about how everything's been going. And, you know, they can't wait to have you guys. So, yeah, definitely makes sense to run it back. Um, you know, the demands there, you know, you guys, are, you know, new record coming out. Everything is fresh and everybody's, you know, ready to rock with you. Yeah, Reading. So, how was that like an hour from from Philly? How far is that? Yeah, no, that's about yeah, like like fifty minutes or so. Yeah, from Philly. Uh, you also got a... uh, the Lehigh Valley is pretty close to there too. I don't know if you guys ever played like Croc Rock back in the day. Um, oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> that's going Allentown, way back. baby. Yep. <laughs> Croc Rocks. Yeah, that was kind of the staple, right? That was the place, like. Uh, like every band, I think the first time we ever played there might have either been opening for Saliva, like 2002, or like with Breaking Ben, like 2005 or something. Yeah, uh, man, that was that, uh, that was the place, man. It was it was wild. There, that was my my first show, like my real first like metal show was Overkill in like yeah 2000 2001 maybe. I don't know, but yeah, that place it got it going. A lot of a lot of good times there for sure. <laughs> I think they sold pizza there too. Was it a pizza place? In the front? oh yeah, there's a pizza place out front. It was yeah, good. Not it was great, good, but you had to get a slice. <laughs> <laughs> it was good when you're when it's two in the morning and you're drunk. It was the best pizza you ever had. Oh yeah, yeah, yep. exactly for sure, man. Um, so you guys are like. You know, I mean, you're teching today, but you guys are basically ready to go. You just got back from Australia, right? A couple of shows down there. Yeah, it feels kind of good because uh, usually when you do tours like this, we have like a month or two off. So you're a little, little nervous. Like we already did some uh, a couple of pre-production days in Nashville. Uh, but everything's just like ready to go. Like we just, yeah, played. Uh, we went down there with Hailstorm, uh, New Zealand and Australia. So we just only had a uh, week off. So we just got over the jet lag and right back on the road. So it, it'll be like clockwork, I think. Get there you stage. go. Yeah. Well, how were uh, how did the new tunes feel in a live setting? Ah, it's so good. It's so nice. good. Like, I guess I guess it's with every band. It's hard not to want to play. Like a Dave, Dave, our guitar player is like, you know, we could, we could, we, we should maybe we should do three from the new record. I'm like, I don't know, man. Like, you, you know, like it's tough because we're in a band, but we're also fans of bands. And I'm trying to put myself in the, in the shoes of the fan. I'm like, if I went and saw like one of my favorite bands play and they played a bunch of stuff from the new record, would I like that? Maybe, 
I don't know. So it's tough. We just want to play so many new songs at the same time. We're like, well, you know, there's only so much time. There's only so many songs. So we don't want to have to cut something that a fan maybe wants to hear for something new. So we'll see. I mean, it's got to be tough at this point. It's uh, uh, like a catch 22, I guess. I don't know what, what yeah. phrase you would use, but at this point, you guys have had so many hits and then there's, you know, now you have the fan favorites that maybe, you know, didn't make it to radio or whatever, but people bought the record. They just love them. And there's always something that's going to be missing. I feel it's got to be tough. Yeah. Like if I went and saw Alice and Chains played and they played Brother or or Nutshell or played something uh, off a of Jar of Flies or something like a lot of people that oh, maybe all they know is Man in the Box, you know, or something. Mm. I'll be like, Yes. <laughs> but then you're thinking, like, I don't know, with a with a bunch of people know this song. We played Santa Monica, or we play, yeah, we played a deep cut. Would people actually be happy. I don't know. You mix and match, right? I mean, Dave actually mm-hmm. has been texting all morning with different set list variations, and I'm kind of like, I don't know. We'll figure it out. So it's it's kind of interesting. Do you guys ever? Do you guys mix it up from night to night, or do you, is it like, all right, first night, here it is. This is it for the tour. Uh, no, this this tour, we're going to mix it up every night. Uh, we do have kind of bookends. We are definitely going to start the show with like the first probably two and end the show with the last probably two or three every night. And the rest, we're kind of probably try some stuff. There's quite a few songs that we want to kind of almost like they're, they're, they're rotation songs. We'll have one slot that will maybe switch two or three songs. So I don't know if you come to our show, you'll get, you know, you potentially hear a different song every night kind of thing. There you go. Yeah. I remember I saw you guys in Atlantic City. Gosh, I don't even know when it was. You guys were all, it was the Motley Crue tour. Oh, wow. Okay. Saints of Los 2000, Angeles. 2008. Yeah. You guys opened with Crutch. That was a killer one to open with. Crutch. That, oh, that yeah. sounded good. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's a tough one to come right out of the gate with like it. They, you guys meant business that night for sure. That much was clear. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, yeah. I don't know. I, I, we a lot. I love that we haven't played Crutch that much. We I don't think we played Crutch since that record. But that's tough, right? Like, what do you do? I know. Uh, there's, there's <laughs> Good problems many. to have. Yeah. So this uh this new record, you know, I'm giving you know the singles a listen, and um, you know, it's coming out March 17th, I think. Right? Yeah, we got like a month. St. Patty's Day, yeah. There we go. Come on. Um, lot heavier uh, than what we have been seeing from you guys in the last two, um, and you know the last two, you guys were kind of almost like taking on a bit of a new identity. Uh, you know, it was like just theory, uh, and now it looks like we're back to like theory of a dead man. Talk yeah. to me a little bit about you know that detour. And why you guys felt the need to go there and why you're coming coming back now, I guess. You know, it's interesting. Is I did an interview, it was maybe a week or so ago, and, and he asked me if he thought our, like our sixth record was a mistake. And it's such a, I mean, uh, I was like, well, no. I mean, RX was our biggest song we ever had. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 our RX was not. Uh, no, I think what happened was you get to a certain point. Uh, David Bowie has this great quote. It's quite long. I can't remember what it is, but it all talks about how dangerous you have to get. You can never never be safe. Always keep going farther in, into the ocean until you can almost not touch the bottom, and that's where you should be all the time in your career. I mean, he was a guy that was a chameleon, right? I mean, every record mm-hmm. he was a different persona. So, I mean, you don't take that advice lightly. And, and he's correct, like – we always were trying to do something different that our X record was very different. I think personally for me, I ran out, run out of like riffs and rock ideas and we came off of our fifth record savages, which was our heaviest album. And this felt burnt. I was just like, I'm just over. I want to do something different and felt a huge connection to doing something more of what our wake up call record was more piano based stuff. Um, it's kind of similar to, I remember like, STP was the same. Remember their first record core was so heavy, but then you could tell immediately the band is kind of shifted into a different kind of style. Uh, and a lot of fans were kind of like, what the hell is going on here? But I remember that was just when they like tiny music was their best stuff. Remember that was, it was so different, but man, tiny music was, I thought their best record from STP. 
Yeah. So for us, I mean, it was just a shift, um, something that you have to do. We never wanted to be complacent and just continue to put out riffs, but then, um, that kind of ended uh, this record kind of felt like, I think after the whole COVID thing, I felt this really cool kind of reconnection with the guitar and some riffs and I like right back to album one, like dinosaur was a riff first. It was just a riff with the title ambulance, same thing. It was just a, a, a title and a riff, uh, which is how I used to write songs. I used to write songs by just riffs and titles. And then I had to try to figure out the lyrics later. So yeah, it's a bit of a, ebb and flow man it's a bit of a change right back to where we started i got you yeah i'm with you man and you know it it um i i would never want to uh you know speak poorly about a, another journalist because you know people ask their questions they have their angles and you know that's fine but it does you know peeve me a little bit to hear you know was it a mistake it's like no, we needed to do that. Like, this is ours, yeah. first and foremost. Like, I know, you know, the connection with the fans, you know, seemingly, especially in rock music is, is it runs very deep and it's very important. But um, first things first, you know, you guys are making, you know, your music. And, you know, you look at like a band like Metallica with St. Anger, you know, everybody hated it, but they needed to make that album. That's where they were at the time. They were struggling. Things yeah. were weird. And that was the result it, it what was it master of puppets no <laughs> but they needed to do it and we might not have any other albums let alone them still touring and you know working on a new one right now if they hadn't have, you know done that and um you know i don't want to say got it out of their system because that makes it sound forced but they just that's where they were and that's where you know you guys were and you explain yeah i just i don't know I was, I was drawn to the piano more than the guitar at the time it's a pretty yeah pretty simple explanation not that you even owe us one you know at all i mean i i find it interesting and i i'm grateful that you you gave it but yeah you know it's just where you guys were at and um you know the fans are going to digest it however however they're gonna and it is what it is yeah, exactly yeah i think if we knew some of those great uh painters back in the day like i think years later they found out like they're able to see past the paint and find out there was actually other paintings under the paintings. You hear mm -hmm. about that? No, I haven't. So they had actually, they've actually like, yeah, they use, you know, whatever technology to see that right. you look like some famous painting and they can actually see behind it that there was another painting behind it. So they actually painted something, then hated it and painted over it. And then they got, you know, Mona Lisa or whatever. <laughs> So it's it's interesting that sometimes some of the stuff we don't realize it's like you know like he probably thought that whatever he painted before the Mona Lisa was badass oh this thing is going to change the world and he's like this is terrible wakes up one day so same as being in a band sometimes you write a song and you're like this is so good and then five years later you're like let's say what what was I thinking but I'm not saying that's what we did but it's yeah being an artist or in a band is it's a bit it's a bit of a struggle sometimes to know exactly what the hell you're doing <laughs> yeah man, it's you know it ebbs and flows and i mean hey for you know for the fans that dug it you know they have that little that little slice of you know theory history and for the fans that you know maybe it wasn't their cup of tea well now we're back with you know some more heavier stuff and um then you get to a show and you hear everything a little bit of everything so yeah very yeah, cool exactly well, hey, man, I really appreciate you taking the time. I know you're busy. You guys got a lot going on uh, the next 24 hours or so. So uh, I'll let you get after it. But uh, Theory of a Dead Man, ladies and gentlemen, they are back. Uh, Pre-order, pre-save. We got a link right down there. And for tickets as well, they are on tour starting tomorrow with Skillet and St. Asonia. Running it back in the fall. Looking forward to that. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks so much, brother. Thanks a lot.